what are some of the most common causes of injury from rhinosol? Well, I'd say I'd probably have to say number one would probably be the bar making contact with your leg. Probably. I'm thinking that might be number one. And personally, that's one of the reasons I don't like short bars on saws. Uh, you have a tendency to just go try to one hand it, if you know what I mean. And the next thing you know, you bump your leg and, you know. But if you got 28 inches of bar out there, you almost have no choice but to two hand it and just naturally keep it away from you. Uh, I do believe a longer bar is safer to run than a short bar. Um, for that is one reason. There's another reason though, and it has to do with kickback. So a short bar, when you're in the wood, a lot of times you're hunched over, you're in the wood and stuff, and your face is closer to the bar than if you had a 28 inch bar and you were just standing up straight, right? So if you're running a short bar and you end up in a kickback situation, that bar doesn't have as far to go until it makes contact with your face. Now, if you got a long 28, 32 inch bar or whatever, it's further away and it's just, it's, it's got a lot further, a lot more distance to travel until it makes contact with your face. Um, so there's two reasons why I prefer a long bar over a short bar. Uh, the third reason is just the back. Uh, it's easier on the back to stand up and cut than it is to hunch over. Um, any, any of you that has ever done it know that it, it is a lot easier. The problem, I should say the most difficult part of doing that is it teaches you to improve your sharpening because you lose the ability to use your felling spikes or your dogs uh, in the cut. So you're completely relying on how sharp your chain is in order to make a good cut. And it really shows, or it, it shows you your flaws and your sharpening a lot. And that's one of the reasons I kind of developed my system of sharpening. Um, I'll have to show you that here one of these days. But many of you have noticed I don't have chaps. Well, I'm one of those guys. I would have chaps. I would wear them if I owned them. Um, I just don't own them. And every time I get the extra bucks to put into them, I end up spending it on my kids. But moving back onto the chain here. I want to show you the safety chain. Um, it's kind of neat. Kind of neat. I got... I got two safety chains here. I'll show you both. And then I'll show you a regular one so you can see. All right. So here's the first chain. Now I personally don't really consider this much of a safety chain. And look at this. Look look at the name on this chain. Can you read it? Windsor. Don't see that much anymore, do you? But I really don't consider this much of a safety chain. And that's because what's supposed to help you at the tip. And you can see as it rolls around the tip, it doesn't really do a whole lot of protruding. You know what I mean? Now let me, let me show you this other chain, which I really consider more of a true safety chain. Alrighty. So this is what I would consider more of a true safety chain. I do not know who manufactures this. This was in that surprise box shipment I got from Doug. And I'm actually quite impressed. <laughs> um, watch how this rolls over the tip of the bar. Take a look at that. See how, as it rolls around, see how it's closed there? 
and it's down below the tooth, but as it rolls around, it opens up and it sticks up higher than the tooth, preventing the tooth the, to, from grabbing into the wood. And there's your safety feature. If the tooth's not grabbing against the wood, you're not going to receive that big kickback, you know? And I think this little piece is just to help close off this gap. Because, you know, you can see the, dif dif the distance that would be there otherwise. Now, a lot of people don't like safety chain because it slows it down. It does. Uh, this is taking up space. It's more material to drag through the wood. So it does slow the saw down. Now, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, um, if this was the top of your bar, and this is the bottom down here, okay? So here's your tip. The part that gives you kickback is this whole area up here. As it, uh, if you end up making contact with the edge of the wood on just this area here, the saw will want to flick up towards your face. So that's why they put these safety features here to help prevent it. I'll show you on the next chain because it doesn't have that. Um, now this chain is not preferred for somebody who's logging uh, just because they do a lot of bore cutting. Uh, this would be good for the average homeowner who does nothing but firewood, especially the guy who orders the firewood by like the triaxle load. Um, it will force you to cut differently to, because of this safety feature. You, you'll find that if you, this makes contact with the wood, you're not really going to go anywhere. So you're going to end up starting to avoid this area of the bar more and more. And to me personally, for the average homeowner, firewood user, this is the kind of chain I would recommend. Um, if I'm running a triaxle load of wood or whatever, this is the kind of chain I would prefer to run. Um, now, I especially recommend this type of chain on any bar that's 20 inches or less. So you can imagine how many homeowners are out there at bar lengths that size. Shorter bars just, you know, they don't have as far to go till they make contact with your face. Do some research. See how many accidents happen each year. And let me show you a normal chain. So here's a normal chain. You can see there is no safety feature. It's just tooth and raker. And see what happens as you roll around the tip. That tooth sitting there all by its lonesome can easily grab a hold of a piece of wood and force that bar up towards your face you know there's nothing there to prevent it this is what your loggers will prefer just because they do a lot of board cutting and board cutting I'm talking they have to go straight into the wood off the tip. There's a technique to doing it. And you got to start at the bottom and work your way to the top. But you never use this part of the bar to make contact with your wood first. Even in a, say you're in a cut on a big piece of wood and you're running a little bar. This area is going to be going, this whole area of the chain is going to be going down through the wood. And you'll find that as you're in there, you're wiggling around and stuff, you're going to find yourself getting kicked back because you're rolling it around and having this make contact with the other edge. You know, on those really big pieces of wood. So, a little thought there. But yeah. Doug, well, Doug sent me that box there, and it started making me think about safety chain a little more, you know? I was, I was thinking to myself at first, I was like, well, I should just go through and grind all them off. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to leave it. Uh, the saw is going to run a little slower, yes. But what's more important? Fast? Or that little bit of safety. You know?
But sometimes you gotta stop and think about that stuff. You wanna see what else Doug sent me? Chain, a whole lot of chain. There's more chain. There's more chain. Sent me some sharpening bit stones. A little homemade flap kind of polishing setup for uh, Porton. Uh, it looks like a a piston stop. Yeah, it looks like a piston stop to me. What else we got here? Tools. The rest of this is all tools. I'm guessing he made it to a yard sale or something. Ended up with a whole bunch of nut drivers. There's more nut drivers. There's more nut drivers. Doug is an overly generous individual. I would, yeah. <laughs> I've never experienced that before, ever. Make sure you say thanks to Doug, please. But here, here's, this is the one that I'm probably gonna wanna use the most. The one tool that I've needed the most in this channel, the one tool. It's inside here. He even wrote me a nice letter. I recognize that. We can start pressure testing now. It's not, you know, big, expensive, fancy setup, but it's enough to do the job easily. They even sent me a bunch of this to, uh, this, like, rubber, I can't remember what he said it's from, but, uh, to make seals, everything I need, right here. Does vacuum hand pressure. So we're good to go. We can pressure test now. Really get into there. If I understand, this kit isn't that expensive. I just haven't got one. Well, I guess you could say I was procrastinating. <laughs> what a good time. What, what, what a good guy Doug is, I'll tell you. Now, a little tip here. Any of you guys who use these sharpeners? I've used different brands before, and Oregon seems to make the better of the, the stone type. But I actually got one sitting here. There's one. If you're, t if you're like me and you sharpen to maintain your edge, You know what I mean? You're just maintaining the edge. You're not. You don't need to go crazy town on it or whatever. Like the the. If you need to grind it really fast, a whole lot of material off really fast. These these stones do the job. These are what you want to use. But there's a different one that you guys may not be aware of. That works really good. This this one here burned up on me. So, I still have the stone in it. Can you see it? So, it's basically like a diamond stone. The nice thing about these is they don't change shape. Or they don't lose their diameter. So, you're, you're more consistent over time, if you know what I mean. But they're not aggressive. They're very fine. And you'll notice your edge is a lot more polished with these, but uh, they're good for just that touch up, not for a whole lot of aggressive work. Way more expensive. You usually pay the same price for one of these as what you do a whole pack of the other stones. 
but if you're like me, these work better for, you know, the touch up work. Uh, I try to use this as much as possible and I use the stone only whenever I have to. Uh, just, I maintain a more consistent tooth throughout the life of the chain using this. Those stones, they tend to lose their diameter real fast, if you know what I mean. But, little shout out to Doug there. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. Thanks for the gifts. And I just, he got me into thinking about safety chain. And I should, for the longest time, I never wanted anything to do with safety chain. I couldn't tell you how many I throw away. I think it's time for me to start changing my opinion because it's it shouldn't just be about the speed and stuff like that. We should consider safety as well. We should. Um, I need to start thinking about getting myself chaps, wearing glasses and all that stuff. Um, I can't do the helmet thing. I don't want to do the helmet. It's not like I'm in the woods dropping trees. Maybe some glasses. Glasses would be good. I think I have two or three pair here anyway I should just grab them right I already wear gloves so I already wear earplugs so glasses and chaps those are the two items on my list so I want to start looking to get my safety improved um, maybe maybe we could do this together you know maybe some of you could Look at improving your safety as well. But till the next one, later.